you would please tell me your full name so that I have it on record on the video as well as in the forms that we're going to talk about. Later. My name is Melinda Fabra Martin. And tell me, so you are from St. Bernard Parish? Yes, I am. Araby. Okay. Araby. So Araby. tell me a little bit about your, you know, upbringing and... and I went to school. We were uh, actually all of us. I have a, a I had uh, two brothers and a sister. I have one brother that passed away. Um, my mom uh, come from a single family. My mother was divorced, and um, she was a beautician. We all went to school in Chalmette. Um, you know, brothers played football. I was on the homecoming court. <laughs> Just your normal family. Um, all of my family, actually, all of my mother's family lived in St. Bernard, and some, uh, and she had seven brothers and sisters. So, um, so you've been, six. So how I, long have you lived in the same? So how long I lived family, there. I my family lived there. Oh God! Um, since my mother was a child. Oh, I, mean, I think of kind of maybe ten, twelve. I could be off on that. I'm not quite That's sure. Good. But we all went to the same uh, school, so it was kind of funny. My mother went to the same grandma school that all four of her children went to, mm -hmm. as well as some of her. Um, her siblings as well so and we my grandmother lived down the street from where I lived uh, so we had a you know we always went to grandma's house that sort of thing um, very big uh, maternal family uh, my father was from uh, Delacroix Island uh, his family were uh, Ishlenos. Mm -hmm. They came from um, Spain and then to the Canary Islands, and then they came here to, uh, and then they went settled in uh, Delacroix. Mother and father were married for some time. He passed away at 43 of uh, a massive heart attack. So um, he had a large family, but we were much closer to the maternal side as far as the paternal side. But my mom's family had. Uh, Gosh, we have so many cousins, <laughs> and so I would say probably about 50 or 60 people. So all of those people lived in St. Bernard, and then all of those people lost their homes. So, so explain to us the the because some people, I mean, I, I know, but I'm not sure everybody. Mm -hmm. will, um, the location of St. Bernard relative to New Orleans. St. Bernard is east of New Orleans. Um, it is past the, um, I know most people will probably have heard of the Ninth Ward, you'll have seen it on the news. Uh, it was actually past that um, in the eastern part almost. Uh, if you go down, as I mentioned, Delacroix, it's at the tip of the Gulf of Mexico. So, okay. mm -hmm. And so um, we're going to talk a little bit about Katrina here for a minute. So sure. What did you do before Katrina? I'd kind of like to know, you know, your occupation, your lifestyle. Um, I um, was an insurance agent for um, a, a large company in New Orleans. Uh, I was a senior account manager. Um, worked every day. I have a son um, who's now going to be 36. Uh, he went. He went to uh, uh, high school and. Uh, well, and he went to high school in New Orleans. He got graduated from a Catholic school. Um, we pretty much just had a normal life. I was single, uh, yeah. dating, <laughs> uh, just the normal thing. Uh, I was very involved with work, so I was always working. Um, family was a big part of our lives, so we always got together with our family on weekends. On Sundays, we had grandma time, so all of my family used to go to um, there on Sundays and play board games or Rook or whatever kind of card game she wanted us to play and we would order uh, dinner so that was always um, a special time for us. Mm -hmm. um, we're Methodists so we always we went to Methodist Church. Um, pretty much uh, life was easy. Uh, I owned a double so I lived on one side and then I rented uh, the other side and then most people at, may call it a duplex we call it a double right, here. Right. Um, just pretty quiet lifestyle. Um, other than that, uh, family was just pretty much most of our lives. We always had something to do, birthday parties or um, someone always had a party at their house. But other than that, um, we were quite normal until then. <laughs> So tell me a little bit about Katrina then. What 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 is your story? What are the things you want people to know about Katrina? There's been a lot in the news, but I'd really like to focus on what you want folks to know about Katrina and your personal story. Katrina 
changed everyone's lives. Not only um, people who are affected by floods, but I mean, you know, just even a neighborhood who didn't have any damage. Um, it separated our family. Our family was very close. Um, when it happened, we all moved away uh, in different areas. So uh, the, the family concept was just kind of scattered at that point. We, uh, it was very difficult. We left the day of the storm, my mother kicking and screaming. She never wanted to leave. Uh, they always stayed for storms, so it was very difficult to, to convince her to go. Uh, my brother, who is deceased at the time, is deceased now, worked for the Superdome. Uh, he was one of the head engineers. So we were going to uh, go to the Superdome, and we left on Sunday. And uh, I was really didn't want to do that. So my youngest brother had gotten a, a room in Alexandria, Louisiana, at a, a, I guess it was kind of a casino resort kind of place. So we went. Um, we decided that we would drive to the casino where my brother was staying. A uh, long ride, um, three hours away, took us almost 12. On the way there, um, I have a dog um, who I've had since my son was 17, he, he's still alive. So uh, on the way there, I got a phone call saying they're not accepting dogs. So at this point, I'm crying and don't know what to do. Um, so. I just said I would just sleep in the car if we got there and they wouldn't take my dog. So we finally arrived. Um, my youngest brother was there with his family. Uh, he has two children. Um, I was there. My son at the time lived in Myrtle Beach, so um, he wasn't in New Orleans. Uh, we had my mother. We were um, got there, and of course, things were looking bleak, but not as bleak as we thought and we could ever think they were going to be. Um, we actually, my mother likes to gamble, so we had a good little time. We started out, you know, the next day, kind of gambling. And then um, we started looking at the um, news and seeing that there was a Walmart in Shelmet, which is a little town over from where we live, was uh, completely covered to the roof with water. At this point, we realized that we were not going home. Uh, so we had to figure out what to do. Uh, we called my mother's sister, who lives in uh, Fort Worth, and uh, of course, gracious as she is, she um, just told us, "Come on, you know, ring whoever." So uh, my sister actually had evacuated to a different area, so she wasn't with my brother and I. Um, my other uh, youngest brother, who we were with, and my oldest brother, um, were with the. Uh, uh, the local 60 union. Uh, he was the president of the union and my brother um, taught school there. So they actually had to get back into their jobs. So they were actually going to go into a different um, area than we did. So we packed up and we went and my aunt took in probably um, some of my uncle's family and probably I would say there was about 15 of us that lived in her house. <laughs> um, her neighbors brought us, I, I mean just everything we could possibly think of. They brought us food every day, they brought us gift cards, they, um, they tried to get, to get us restarted in our life. Um, while we were there, while, um, since I was in the insurance business, I tried to help all my family members um, with you know, their homeowners, um, any Red Cross, the FEMA, whatever we could do. But in the meantime, I was um, uh, trying to get back into the swing of thing with my job, so we all uh, went and bought laptops and you know, we tried to get our work done because we did the group uh, medical side. So of course medical insurance was, a, was an issue as well. People couldn't get their prescriptions and those sorts of things, so we had to help. So I stayed there probably about um, two or three weeks. Uh, my mother and my sister uh, stayed there for over a year. The fire department um, set my mother, my sister's mother-in-law, and my sister up into an apartment. They paid for it for a year. They um, paid for my uh, uh, niece and nephew to go back to Catholic school. And so they stayed there for, um, for that time. And at that point, my brother-in-law was um, coming back to New Orleans, driving back and forth, because um, he had a job in Araby at the Domino Sugar Refinery. So it was very difficult for that family as well. 
um, driving, from driving. The yeah, he would he would stay. Um, actually, the um, sugar refinery had uh, trailers on their property so that they could stay, and then he would go back on weekends. So that was hard. Um, I did not know where I was going to go. I had a friend who um, had a friend in um, in real estate. So they got me an apartment in Baton Rouge. I uh, drove by myself with my dog, with a, my car full of all the goodies that I received from uh, the gracious people that were in Texas. Um, pull up to this apartment and just lost it. It was like being in, um, I don't, it was just horrible, how can I say? It was just um, kind of, uh, ratty and, and, and scary for me because I had actually never lived out of Araby my whole life. So, I mean, I've traveled a lot, but that was just very scary for me. Um, while I got there, I went into the apartment and I was like, I'm a clean freak. And it was just full of grease and, and just, it, was, it was just horrible. Um, ran into someone downstairs that I actually knew by association from someone else. Uh, I knew that he was a painter and begged him to actually come in and paint the place for me. So he did. Um, my coffee table was a, a, a box, a vacuum cleaner box. It just, you know, furniture was just minimal. Um, I had an air mattress that served as uh, my sofa as well as uh, my bed. <laughs> um, lived there, did not go out past dark because um, across the way there were, um, was a church who had some um, young men there that they took in uh, from New Orleans that uh, were actually smoking crack in our um, alleyway of our my apartment. So I did not go anywhere after dark, um, not even walk my dog. So when you were, how, how forgive me, I, you may have said and I missed mm -hmm. it, but you moved into this apartment how long after Katrina? Probably about three weeks. Because okay. I only stayed in Texas for three weeks. And then you stayed in this apartment for how long? I stayed only in that apartment probably for about three months. I commuted back and forth from New Orleans, from Baton Rouge to New Orleans. Um, after the second month, we had a satellite office that we set up in Baton Rouge, so I would go there a couple of days a week. Um, I moved out of that apartment and then um, my friend who um, was in the real estate and unfortunately it wasn't that they just gave us that uh, me apartment, it was just that that was the only thing that, that was available in Baton Rouge. Mm -hmm. They, um, she moved out of the apartment that she was in so I moved into uh, that apartment which was much nicer, I wasn't as afraid. Um, the only thing is, is that I commuted back and forth to New Orleans because our office was kind of uh, getting, trying to get back to normal because we were downtown. So the building that we in, all the glass had, had blown out of the building. Mm -hmm. And in insurance, you mentioned you know, the importance of doing the medical insurance so people could even just get their prescriptions yeah. filled. What was the volume of people trying to deal with insurance? Uh, Do you it was, have an estimate? Oh my God, it was just... Uh, I know that the property and casualty side, because we all worked, and I mean, usually our, our department was usually a little bit um, set up apart from them, but they were taking claims, they were working, they had a 24-hour crew. Um, us, you know, we had, um, we all had a book of business, so um, we mostly did uh, employer groups. So um, we had the employer contacting us, and then we were reaching out to their employees. Um, I would say uh, there was a lot of people, and it was hard to say maybe 60-70% um, of our business, you know. I mean, you had an ID card, and then you didn't have any of your medical records. So it was really difficult for their new physician to treat them because most of the records were lost here in, um, in New Orleans. Not so much anymore now. Everything is online, and you can actually get it now um, by going online into an account. So, and, and that was one of the good things that came out of Katrina. So how long were you, did you ever move back to New Orleans? Yes. yes. This is, yes. So I was there, I would say totally, I was probably in Baton Rouge for maybe six months, five or six months. It was getting really, really hard for me to commute back and forth every day. Uh, it was taking me probably four to five hours. Uh, two and a half in the morning and two and a half in the afternoon to get home because most people lived in Baton Rouge and they were commuting. 
Uh, so I had started to look for an apartment and look and look. I looked uptown, I looked um, in Algiers Point, um, uh, and then I found a, a little place in the French Quarter. Um, found a place in the French Quarter, talked to the girl, um, uh, loved it. It was uh, something that I had never experienced. So um, in the meantime, during all this period, I was extremely depressed, uh, which is like most people because you've lost your home, you, you don't have any connection with your family. Um, my family was away. My brother, um, the only brother that was here, um, lived in Metairie, and I, when I'd come in town, I'd stay at his house on the weekends driving if I was too tired. Um, so I found this great place in the quarter. So at this point, um, I would cry all the time. Um, stay outside at night time and uh, just because I w didn't have a mate and just ask God that please don't ever let me experience anything like this ever again and that if he could bring someone into my life that would be with me forever. Um, needless to <laughs> did I know that uh, he was going to do that. So I lived in the, I moved in the quarter probably in January of 2006. Um, my husband, who I, I, we met, I'll go into that, but we, um, I went to the House of Blues for the first time um, on March the 13th, 2006, at a Bonnie Raitt concert and seeing these five guys on one side and he was smiling at me and my friends were going about, there was some, I don't know, some issue between some girls, so they were kind of going about back and forth about something and this gentleman was smiling at me and I was like, this is not my type, this is not the guy, I know. So anyway, he started talking to me, which was really fun. Um, I had never met anybody, you know, never, i never been in California. I mean, when we traveled, we always traveled on the East Coast, we never traveled on the West Coast. So it was really interesting to hear that he was in the film industry. He was actually here during um, uh, during Katrina. They were filming Deja Vu, and they actually flew a private plane in to get them out um, the night before. And they were one of the first people to come back because they had explosions here, because they were going. They were uh, the movie was uh, going to. Uh, uh, I think it was a. Uh, they it, it was a. Um, barge or something that they had exploded on the river while they were filming the movie so they had all of this stuff that they had to come back and take care of because they were worried that something was going to get into the wrong hands. So can I ask you a question uh -huh. about the explosion? So they, the film crew, the film crew did like a supervised explosion of oh, a yeah. barge yes. on the Mississippi yeah, River right. that they filmed. Yes. And that was the, the That was right after Katrina. After they Katrina. came back after Katrina and finished the movie. Mm -hmm. And so when they when did they do that explosion relative to Katrina? Oh my god. Well that was it came after. But they had but all the um, all the explosions were here in New Orleans. They were in a warehouse. For the for the movie, so they they came back right away after the movie, uh, and they actually started working. He uh, like right away, like three like, days later. I'm days saying later, it was probably a. Weeks? I'm really not quite sure of the time frame. I would say more maybe a month when you could start getting back into New Orleans because it took a while for you to get back into New Orleans after the storm. Uh, I mean, as you, it took us, I, I, we couldn't get to our home uh, for over a month because of the water. So I'm sorry. I oh, that's okay. You, uh, the no, no, no. Thing just no, no, no. Yeah. So they just had to come back. They were afraid of um, because so many people were vandalizing things, and it was locked in a warehouse, and no one actually got into it. So that was a good thing for them. Um, so I met this gentleman, and then he was working on Deja Vu, and uh, we met, hung out, and then we never left each other's side. So I guess um, he was my knight in shining armor. I would, I, I think so now. <laughs> At the time, I wasn't quite sure. Um, the uh, I lived next door to a voodoo museum, and uh, my uh, voodoo priest, who just passed away, just uh, probably in the last couple, of, maybe a month or so, um, he would watch my dog for me when I flew to California, and he would. Um, he loved my husband. They had the same last name, so he was real proud of that. And from the first, he met him in 30 seconds, and he told me I was going to marry him. So that was really interesting. So, uh, so um, I lived in the quarter for almost three years. Great time. It was good for my family. They got to come visit. It, um, you know, it took 
a lot of um, a lot of pressure off of them, so they got to come and just kind of experience New Orleans. Because I remember when I first moved there, I was petrified, but I walked, and when I walked, just the smells of the food and the bread and the donuts, and just I was home. So that was a, a great, great experience. Um, and you were able to get a an apartment in the quarter. You said you looked uptown and I looked, looked everywhere. Everywhere, but. The, so tell me why you were able to get an apartment in the quarter. I just, I stumbled upon it actually. I had seen it. Um, it was, I want to say it might have been on Craigslist. I'm not quite sure if it was on Craigslist or it was in the one ads in, in New Orleans. I'm just kind of, um, it was only, um, it was a, a house built in the 1700s. So we, own, I think they only had five uh, apartments. And then they had a slave quarters in the back, which is where the property manager lived. Um, I think she felt sorry for me <laughs> that um, I didn't have a place to go. So um, she ran into me on the spot. So I'm curious about um, the, the housing situation for a lot of reasons, but I'm kind of wondering, did you look anywhere at like homes? Because there were so many homes that might have been available. I wasn't sure if I wanted to buy a home yet. Um, I still had my home, um, and I was uh, gutted it. We had it gutted and down. Um, and of course, it was down to the wood. And everything was treated. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do yet. Um, after speaking to my family, uh, none of my family members moved back to St. Bernard, not one. Uh, they're all, um, most of them are across the lake, uh, Slidell, um, Mandeville. Um, some of them uh, live in Metairie, but no one went back to St. Bernard. So it was kind of, I was kind of waiting to see what anyone was uh, going to do. Um, because I wasn't sure of my relationship with my husband as um, now, and as to what we were going to do, I didn't know if I wanted to buy another property, especially after, after coming from the Katrina thing and having to deal with the insurance, and it was just all really very, very stressful. Wish we would have bought a bunch of properties, actually, in Lakeview, for um, instance, because the property here was like ten thousand dollars. You could buy a lot here for ten thousand dollars. So that was one of the reasons why I didn't go looking for a place to buy, and a lot of places to buy would have to be. Um, a lot of them had to go in and just be remodeled and everything, and I just wasn't up to anything like that. After Katrina, I didn't want any stress anymore, other than. Um, you know, work because it was just everything was stress. Um, moving, uh, buying furniture. You couldn't get furniture for three months. You could go buy it, but it was on back order, so you couldn't get anything uh, in. You might get one piece of furniture in uh, one month and then a, another piece two months later. So just waiting on all those things and, and, and then thinking of having to maybe go buy another place was just not uh, not for me. A lot of people did. My brother bought a new home. My sister bought a new home. Um, I, I didn't, so. Well, I think the, the thing that I wanted to go back to just a few things. If okay, you sure. So um, one of the things that I encountered a lot up north was people saying, oh, why are people wait till the last minute to leave? Why aren't they leaving? So I would kind of <laughs> like you to talk. You said, you know, you drug your mom kicking and screaming. I'd kind of like you to explain for people who are not from here, you know, <laughs> what, do, what do people do who live here when they hear a hurricane is in the Gulf? Okay. This is from our perspective, our family. We, um, when you hear a storm coming, because we've been through, through so many false alarms and, um, we leave for some that come and it's like and you're like oh okay um, one thing I think for some people is the expense um, for a lot of people um, they make it a vacation uh, I think most people who did not leave for Katrina a lot of them didn't have the financial um, the finances to leave uh, my mother, the reason why she didn't want to leave, because um, they, my family never left for hurricanes. 
we um, actually, during Betsy and Camille, our family was still here. We were put up in the sugar refinery. So I, I think it's an old thing that people from a different generation don't want to leave their house and their belongings because they've always said, like my mother said in the neighborhood that we, we, that we lived in, oh, the water never comes past the step. So people have always associated another hurricane, um, they compare them, like, oh, well, this was the worst one that we had and we only had three feet of water on this street. Oh, well, this was, you know, um, th the last one we had, we never had anything. We didn't even have a broken glass. So some people may not even want to board their um, windows up because they just feel like, um, they feel the, uh, the media actually gets in a frenzy and actually makes it worse than what it is. And I think that that's one of the reasons why people don't want to leave. Um, we were not going to leave for this storm. I was at a uh, preseason Saints football game uh, on uh, fr Friday night. Uh, my mother, at that point, she was getting a little nervous and calling me and saying, you know, we need to go, we need to go. So a friend of mine, we were like, oh, we'll, we'll go. We had come back from Key West. We're like, our suitcases are still packed. We can just throw stuff in. Um, so the next day, and I have a picture um, at my house um, of my television, I had my television on all day, and um, there was this storm on the radar that I had never seen before, um, and I'm going to be 54 years old, so I uh, was just like, oh my. And I, at that point, I got really scared, and I'm thinking, okay, this is, we really have to go. Um, started, you know, everyone, all of our families started calling each other saying, okay, it's time, we need to go, we need to go now, we need to go in the morning, or we need to make plans to go, or, or those sorts of things. Some people get really, really nervous and may leave three days before a storm because they don't want to ever experience anything like that. And even the, um, the discomfort in August of not having an air condition without electricity is a lot here. Um, I just think that they don't want to leave their homes because my mom was just so after us to do it, to go, and then on the final day that it was time for us to leave, and we were just we're waiting on her, so we were trying to leave on Sunday morning, we're like, come on, we have to go, I, I don't want to leave. Why? Because I don't think it's going to be bad, I'll be fine. I'm like, mom, we, we really have to go. Uh, in the meantime, my brother was calling her, and he hadn't left yet, but my other family members were already gone. And uh, she just kept procrastinating and procrastinating. And then uh, a lot of our neighbors didn't go. Uh, one of the neighbors, I think I told you uh, when we spoke on the phone, uh, was an elderly lady and she didn't want to go. Uh, she drowned. Uh, my neighbor down the street, um, they had a two-story house and they were climbing out the, f out the windows to climb to go on the roof. Um, so. I don't think that that will happen much more, that people will not leave. Uh, they do have now um, uh, designated areas. I don't know if you're aware of that, that they have designated areas. And uh, actually there's one um, on Harrison and Canal Boulevard. You may want to take a picture of it. It's, um, it's of a metal sculpture. I think it's a person. And those are uh, now spots where people can be picked up if a storm comes. So transportation was also a problem for the elderly. So I think now that they have all these areas that people can go to and they can now leave, I don't think that people will stay as often as they did in the past. And so people who didn't have the wherewithal in the past, mm -hmm. so if you are elderly or low income mm -hmm. and don't have the resources, the city or the federal government has now set these. I think that it would. I think it's a combination of the city and the federal government that, that put these sites up after Katrina because of so many people that um, drowned and uh, did not leave their homes and had to be rescued, and most people, um, of course, in the uh, Ninth Ward and those areas, those people were low income people and they didn't have the finances to leave, or that a lot of them didn't have vehicles. Uh, so they stayed and uh, now they have, they'll have buses that come up until a certain point that will pick up these people. You're only allowed, um, I think, a uh, one bag 
And I think that they also have, the Humane Society works with them as well to also take your animals. So that was one good thing that did come out of Katrina, I think, um, so that people don't have to perish like they did because of those, of not having the needs, you know, the means to be able to leave. Right. So did your mom come back to her home? No. 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 She ended up settling in Slidell? Or um, my mom Mandeville? lives across the lake. Yes, she lives in Mandeville, um, not far from my sister. Um, that was her mother's home, and she lived um, in it and took care of my grandparents. My, grandpa my grandmother had deceased before the storm, but she would probably never left either. So just, <laughs> they were very stubborn people. Um, yeah, it's the, the house has been changed. I actually see it. I went and showed my mother-in-law the other day when we were driving down there. Uh, no, no one went back. I do have a neighbor that the own the neighbor that um, was crawled out the window. They're 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 there. Her and her husband are still in in the same house. So, you met this guy yes. at House of Blues. Yes. He's now your knight in shining armor. Yes. So take us from House of Blues to sort of the trajectory of that. House of Blues to um, met this, oh, he was just a kind man and at the time he was going through a divorce so I think we were both in a different place um, and I think we would, uh, he had never met one, no one like me and I had never met anyone like him. I think it was kind of, I like to have a lot of fun and he was a little quiet kind of guy and it was around uh, the time where it was St. Patty's Day parades and so we kind of did all this fun stuff and uh, he was here for about six months so we dated for that time while he was here and then we uh, I would uh, travel back and forth we commuted back and forth to uh, he'd come here to New Orleans and then I'd go to California uh, he was in the middle of a renovation of his house, which was kind of funny because his house was down to the studs. <laughs> so I remember meeting him and him saying, I'm not sure if you want to go to California. He said, because my house, you know, I only have like two rooms that are like finished because he used to buy and, and remodel and sell homes as well as in the, in the movie business. And so he says, I was, so I just started laughing and said, it's no different than any of the homes that are here. So I really, it doesn't bother me. So we had some really cool um, dinners over there on uh, saw horses and, you know, plywood tables. So that lasted um, for a little while. So then we were getting much closer. He uh, got another movie in New Orleans. And so he was here for, um, for another four to five months. And then we decided after a couple of years that someone needed to move. Of course, he made a little more money than I did. So I uh, packed up, was gonna move, and I had a medical emergency. So I wound up not being able to leave um, on the time that I was supposed to, so then I had to stay at a friend's house for a little while. So I arrived in California on Cinco de Mayo. Uh, in the process of doing that, though, um, I was picking out the granite and the colors for our house while we were dating because while well, since I was moving there, I was picking all everything out for him to do. So when I got to the house, when I moved there, almost the house was almost completely done with everything that we had jointly picked out. So that was a fun thing. When I moved to California, it was a shocker for me. We lived in Burbank, very sleepy little town, um, uh, studios. I didn't know anyone. I knew one person, and that was a friend of his. Um, the first two weeks that I was there, we had an earthquake. Um, not a big earthquake, but I, I didn't even know it was an earthquake. I was sitting in the living room going through some paperwork um, and there was someone moving down the street and I actually thought it was a moving van because <laughs> I kind of felt that, I don't know, roll kind of thing. Um, Anthony was actually working on a commercial in the valley, um, in the desert, I'm sorry, and had no phone service. So on the news, I started hearing about this earthquake and I'm like, oh my God. 
So the only person there to come check on me was his sister and one friend that I had. So they came and uh, when they arrived, I was drinking a Bloody Mary because I was like, oh no, please don't let me go through this again. So that kind of passed and at that point I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to live here um, other than the fact missing my family uh, and, and seafood was, was the worst thing ever. So I did work for two years there. I volunteered um, in Burbank. I did a lot of volunteer work. I volunteered for the Burbank Temporary Aid Center. I wanted to give back um, if I wasn't in my own community and to another community since people were so gracious to myself and my family. I just thought it was a good way of me being able to meet new people as well as giving something back to the community. While doing that, um, I also uh, volunteered for the Burbank Chamber of Commerce one day a week. They hired me as their membership director. So I was the membership director at the Burbank Chamber of Commerce for two and a half years, which everyone in Burbank thought that that was just the most hilarious thing because I was from New Orleans. <laughs> um, my husband, um, you know, I was happy there, and um, Anthony got a movie in New Orleans and was calling me and um, with my family, and I would be crying on the phone like, this is ridiculous. You're having dinner with my family and I'm over here, you know, I don't have anyone here. I mean, I have my friends that I had made, but this is silly. Now this is coming from a man who said he would never move to New Orleans. Uh, calls me up one day and says, what do you think about putting our house up for sale? And I went, hmm. Um, and let me back up a little bit. My brother was sick um, for a time and I was flying a lot back to New Orleans uh, during Christmas and then Anthony got a movie. My brother passed away in January. So that was even worse for me because I was so homesick and so wanted to be with my mom and my family. So um, when he got the show here, I was just like, I, I want to go home, you know, I just, I want to be, if you're going to stay there, then I just want to, we can rent our house and I want to come here. So then he called to sell our house. And so I wasn't quite sure if I was really happy because I really loved California, but I missed New Orleans. It was kind of a, a really hard thing to do. Our house sold in 15 days. <laughs> so that was even harder. <laughs> so we um, decided that um, my husband was living in a friend of mine that had like a little, um, downstairs appointment uh, apartment on uh, city off of city park avenue so he lived there and uh we moved into this tiny little spot and i was like oh my god we can't live here forever uh god, then we decided we would live in lakeview um, bought a brand new house in lakeview and been there for the last two and a half years so you moved back to new orleans in what year oh uh, let's see 2012. Okay. 2012. And so having come from, grown up, raised in this area, lived in various sections, lived in the French Quarter, came back, what is New Orleans now compared to what it was pre-Katrina? I love New Orleans now. I love the spirit. I love that people are, um, people want to come here. People want to visit. People want to stay. People, um, everyone that we bring here, and we've had a lot of visitors coming from California who've never been to New Orleans, say that this is the friendliest town that they've ever been in. And I think it's from people here have, um, I think after Katrina, I think people realize what loss is, not only loss of, 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 of your home or, or, your, or your things, it was the loss of friendships. It was losing friends and then having to make new friends because a lot of our friends didn't come back after Hurricane Katrina. So I think building new friendships here and watching the town grow, uh, watching people come in uh, and, and loving our, our town, uh, the new medical facility that's coming up on Canal Street uh, is going to bring so many people here uh, that we're excited about that. We're excited about our lakefront um, being revamped, um, housing markets going up, uh, not a lot of availability, I don't think, anymore. I think it's just people are happy to be home. I know I'm happy to be home.
Okay, so that, that's actually a, a great, good. great spot to end on. Good. Being yes. happy to be home. I am. Is there anything else you would want to say that we haven't covered? Just that um, Katrina brought me loss, but it also brought me love. So all everything that I went through, I would go through it again if I would wind up in the same spot that I am in right now because I am in a great place now, a great place, happy. And um, I hope that it's brought a lot of other people from being so sad to being happy and finding a happy place in their heart.